Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. We're on our next part of the series, uh, Christmas. A tree decked with gold and silver. Okay. We're going to go through the Bible and we're going to talk about it. Is the Bible for or against Christmas trees? If you want to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 1, I'm excited about this study because I get to get back to the Word of God, which is more important. Um, now, for those of you who are against Christmas trees, I'm going to disappoint you a little bit for some of you because I don't know what the expectations were. Because some of you might have been expecting me to go off into, you know, a lot of the pagan practices of the Christmas tree and adorning it and putting the thing on top, uh, whether it's the, the star or the angel, uh, the gifts underneath. We're going to talk about the gifts underneath and the Christmas tree, but I'm not, and, you know, putting idols on it. But I'm not going to go into a lot of the practices because they're very satanic, they're very wicked, and some of them are pretty disgusting. You know, when you actually look into the origins of the type of things that they put on trees today, it's very pagan and very wicked. I don't have to do all that to disprove the Christmas tree. All I need is God's perfect written word. So, and for those of you who are 100% for Christmas trees, my hope and desire, I pray to the Lord, I'm hoping that I can remain charitable, having charity and love when I'm preaching and teaching this. I get frustrated because after this study, if you still vehemently stand for a Christmas tree, you know, I get frustrated. There's no, after we're done, there's no justifying having a Christmas tree, okay, in your home as a Bible-believing, God-fearing man or woman. Okay. So, Matthew, I'm going to read Matthew 22, 37, Mark 12, 30, Luke 10, 27. Okay. This is Jesus speaking. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Okay. Have, the Bible says, He that answereth the matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto you. I'm asking you to have an open mind for God's word. Okay. Uh, and a love, I know a lot of you, brothers and sisters of Christ, have a love of God's Word. We're going to go through the Word, and I've learned some pretty things that are pretty amazing. Okay, So, if you turn to Deuteronomy 12, 1. I remember this study, I've mentioned it before, and these studies about Christmas. Um, the study I did on high places or church buildings. Right? I never really looked into what the high places were all about. We did an amazing study together, and... It, I know what it means now. High places is trying to avoid going to Jerusalem and doing the sacrifices there like they were supposed to and doing it elsewhere, okay? Giving their sacrifices to God and oftentimes to false gods, okay? That's why um, Solomon, when he uh, destroyed everything except for the high places, his heart was still right with God because he was doing sacrifices to the Lord, but it wasn't supposed to be done in those high places. Okay. Now the other thing you see here, what we're going to read here, is about groves. Trees is in the Bible. Groves is in the Bible. Christmas is not in the King James Bible. So, um, Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 1. These are the statutes and judgments which ye shall observe to do in the land which the Lord God of thy fathers giveth thee to possess it, all the days that ye live upon the earth. Okay. Ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess serve their gods. Lowercase g, gods. Upon the high mountains, and upon the hills, and under every green tree. And ye shall overthrow their altars, and break their pillars, and burn their groves with fire, and ye shall hew down the graven images of their gods, and destroy the name of them out of that place. Okay. Groves. What are groves? Say, in gardening a small wood or cluster of trees with a shaded avenue, something to do underneath it. Okay. Or a wood impervious to the rays of the sun. A grove is either open or closed. Open when consisting of large trees whose branches shade the ground below. Close when consisting of trees and underwood, like a lot of brush, um, where the trees are blocking it, uh, which defend the avenues from the rays of the sun and from violent winds. 
A wood of small extent is another uh, um, uh, example of a grove. In America, the word is applied to a wood of natural growth in a field as well as the planted trees in a garden, but only to a wood of small extent and not to a forest. In other words, you can plant your own grove of trees. Uh, something resembling a wood or tree in a wood. Okay. So, groves is a group of trees or trees that you can be underneath. It shades, it overcovers you. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to sum it up and then we're going to go through some verses. What's going on here as we read through these verses is these pagan people, the practice of the land that God promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, one of their practices was is they would have trees, a grove, a group of trees. They would adorn the trees. They would put um, idols either above, on, or underneath. And then they would do animal sacrifices underneath, and they would do gift offerings underneath the tree. Okay, And God right here is condemning that practice. Now, you say it has nothing to do with the Christmas tree. Uh, just by what I just said, you can stop and think the practice of the Christmas tree. Do you put something on top of the tree? Do you put things on the tree? Do you put things underneath the tree? All right? Just to think about that right there. But right there, they're commanded to destroy those things. And the biggest thing that we're focusing on here is groves. So, uh, turn to Ezekiel 6.13. Oh, too far. Ezekiel 6, verse 13. Then shall ye know that I am the Lord, when their slain men shall be among their idols, round about their altars, upon every high hill, and on all the tops of the mountains, and under every green tree, and on every thick oak, the place where they did offer sweet Savior to all their idols. I want to throw that in there because it's saying, underneath these trees, these groves, whether it's a single tree or a group of tree, uh, they were worshiping false gods under it. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to go through a couple things. What's going on with the Jewish people in this land? Um, uh, 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 24. Turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 24. Going back. We're going to talk about the Jews turning from God when it comes to these trees, these groves. 2 Chronicles 24. 24, 18. And they left the house of the Lord God of their fathers and served groves, served groves, let that sink in for a second, and idols, and wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem for their for this their trespass. They were serving trees. They were worshiping trees. Okay? They'd put idols on them and it would turn to them, it would turn that tree into a lowercase, it's a lowercase G God, and they would be worshiping it. Okay? We don't have to turn there, but we're gonna read a few passages. Why are the Jewish people they're turning from God? Originally, God told them, you're to, take, you're to chase everyone out of this land. All these pagans, their pagan practices, the sodomites, um, you can say feminism, all this stuff that would hinder them serving God properly in 100%. Okay? Because you remember in the Old Testament, you read about Jezebel, and you read about how certain things, because I, I threw in feminism, but um, witchcraft. Feminism is this, as the sin of witchcraft. They're throwing. They're supposed to throw all these people out of their land, but they didn't. Uh, Exodus twenty three thirty three, they shall not dwell in thy land, lest they make thee sin against me. For if thou serve their gods, lowercase g gods, it will surely be a snare unto thee. That's God saying you need to get them out, because if you don't, their lowercase g gods is going to be a snare unto you. Joshua twenty three thirteen. 
Know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you, and scourges in your sides, and thorns in your eyes, until ye perish from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. They did. They, if you read the, whole, the story of the Jewish people with Joshua and them going into the land that was promised to them, they didn't kick everybody out of the land like they were supposed to. Mm -hmm. Judges 2.3 Wherefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their gods, lowercase g gods, shall be a snare unto you. What's going on? As we read the Old Testament, we're going to read a couple more places in the Old Testament. Uh, the Jews have all this paganism around them, and they're falling for it, and they're starting to do the pagan practices, and they're starting to worship false gods. Okay. And as we're going to read, you're going to see how they'd fall away, and then we're going to talk about how they came back, and then they'd fall away, and how they came back. And it's important, because we're talking about groves in this study. What are groves? They're trees that the pagans worshipped underneath and the tree itself. First Kings. Turn to First Kings. First Kings 14. For the Lord shall smite Israel as a reed is shaken in the water, and he shall root up Israel out of this good land which he gave to their fathers, and shall scatter them beyond the river, because they had made their groves, provoking the Lord to anger. Okay, they fell into worshiping false gods and doing things they're not supposed to do. Victoria's underneath me. I didn't want her getting, making too much noise. My dog, uh, my miniature schnauzer. Uh, jump down to verse 22. I got to actually flip the page. And Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord, and they provoked him to jealousy with their sins, which they had committed above all that their fathers had done. For they also built them high places and images and groves on every high hill and under every green tree. First time we said it, it was talking about a certain man, and then when he passed away, his son took over and continued doing it. Okay. I hope I got that right. I just didn't. Uh, Nahum. Yeah, Nahum was the first one, and Judah is the second one. Uh, uh, so we see there that they're falling into the trap. They're falling away from God, and they're worshiping these groves, these trees. Okay. Uh, Someone... Uh, when you try to do the study online with the man's wisdom and the way men talk about like articles and stuff online, they're saying there's only one verse about Christmas trees in the Bible. Uh, we're going to get there. Jeremiah chapter 10. Uh, no, it's all throughout the Bible. Okay. Christmas trees, not the term Christmas, but the trees that are pagan, which Christmas is behind, that's behind Christmas is the better way to say it, is all throughout the Bible in the Old Testament. Okay. Second Chronicles, last place. There's tons of places we can go to where they fall away from the Lord and they start building these groves and they start worshiping these trees. And then we're going to talk about uh, those who, who stood for God and got rid of these groves. So Second Chronicles chapter 33. Uh, here's the worst of them all, if I remember correctly. Second Chronicles chapter 33, verse 1. Manasseh. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem. But did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, like unto the abomination of the heathen, whom the Lord hath cast out before the children of Israel. Remember heathen, because we're going to talk about that in Jeremiah chapter 10. For he built again the high places which Ezekiel his father had broken down, and he reared up altars for Balaam, and made groves, and worshipped all the host of heaven, and served them. Also he built altars in the 
house of the Lord, whereof the Lord had said in Jerusalem, shall be my name forever, be forever. And he built altars for all the host of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. He actually brought it into the house of the Lord. Okay. The pagan practices in worshiping all the hosts of heaven. Uh, he caused the, his children to pass through the fire, basically sacrificing children, into the valley of the son of Hinnon. Also he observed times, observed times. I'm going to stop there for a second. You can put your finger there. Remember our study we did on the date, why the 25th of December, the summer solstice, um, they observe times, the shortest day of the year and the longest day of the year, and it's a 12, sometimes the, the solstice is celebrated 12 days. You know, you have, you have the 12 days of Christmas. It's the summer solstice, okay? And as like I said, there's different variations of it, and Satan, he, um, he looks at his crowd, and he knows how to deal with them. Okay, I'm going to tweak it so they'll accept it. Over here, they won't accept it that way, so I'm going to tweak it some more so they'll accept it this way. But the, there's nothing wrong with God setting that up because God set that up to have the shortest day of the year, letting us know winter's starting, and the longest day of the year to let us know summer's starting. Okay? There's nothing wrong with looking at the signs as far as the weather to say, hey, you know, you can let it know. I think in the New Testament, I did a study once where it's talking about you can tell, Jesus is saying you can tell by the weather, the sky, whether it's going to rain and everything and this and that. Okay? There's nothing wrong with that. But here's the thing. And used enchantments and used witchcraft and dealt with a familiar spirit and with wizards. He wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. They'll oftentimes take that, that something that God does when it comes to the times, uh, observing times, and they'll pervert it big time. So he's the worst of them. Okay? He actually brought it into the house of the Lord. It's not just in the high places and in groves. He actually brought it into the Lord, or Lord, into the house of the Lord. Give me a second. Victoria, sit. My rooster's going off and she's hearing it and she thinks something's outside and she's like, what is that? Um, so that's people that we see in here. Like I said, there's lots of places we could have gone. And, I, and you know me, I like going to a lot of places, but I want to keep this within an hour, hopefully. Um, so now we're going to talk about Jews that turn back to God. What did they do? when it came to the high places and the groves. 2 Kings 18, verse 1. I'll go back to 2 Kings. I don't know if you can hear it. <laughs> but he's, he's, he's crowing. 2 Kings 18, verse 1. Okay. We're going to read to 6. Now it came to pass in the third year of Hoshea, Hoshea, I don't know if I'm pronouncing, I'm probably butchering that big time. Ho, Hoshea, son of Eli, Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was also was Abi, or Abi the daughter of Zechariah and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord according to that according to all that David his father did he removed the high places not just the, we're going to read about the groves he removed the high places and break the images and cut down the groves cut them down and break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made and here's why he did that for unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it. They were worshiping it. And he called it uh, Nehustan. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. For he clave to the Lord and departed not from, the fo from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord God which the Lord commanded Moses. Okay. Um, first thing here, uh, a man came. We're talking about how they turned back to God and they cut the groves down. But a man came and trusted and obeyed God's word and his commands. And he feared God 
it said that feared God rather than men and set things right among his people. Okay, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm not saying I'm a king, but I'm saying I'm a man of God and I'm coming to set things right. There's things being done wrong. These Christmas trees are wrong. And I'm coming to you with the word of God showing in the Old Testament how it's pagan. It's pagan practice. And God's not for it. And I'm letting you know you need to get that out of your life. You need to get that out of your house. Okay. I had an old Christmas tree. I threw it away. Okay. Uh, two, ask yourself, what does the Christmas tree have to do with the birth of Jesus Christ? Because he was coming and he was doing the laws, the commands. He was obeying God's commands and he was seeking after God. Okay, So many people say that they put a Christmas tree up, they adorn it, top of the tree, on the tree, gifts underneath, and they do it for Jesus Christ. What does the Christmas tree have to do with the birth of Jesus Christ? I'll ask that again. All right. Are you following man rather than God? Okay. We saw that when the people were falling away from God, they were following men, these pagan men, bringing in these pagan gods and these pagan practices. They weren't following God. Here we have um, Hoshea, Hoshea, like I said, it's probably butchering it again, I apologize. Uh, he's seeking God. Where is it at in his word when it has to do with the birth of Jesus Christ? The, the Christmas tree. And when you do the Christmas tree, are you following God or are you following men? Okay. A lot of people like to say that the King James Bible is their, mat is their foundation in all matters of faith and practice. Yet when you hit them up with what we're talking about here, they'll turn their back on the Bible. I want my Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. Acts 5.29. Acts 5, would Peter think of that, of the whole thing of men, obeying men or obeying God? Okay, he said, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. That's supposed to be our attitude, brothers and sisters in Christ. When a man comes to you and says, Hey, let me tell you about the Christmas tree and how great it is and you should do it. You should go, Okay, what does the scripture say? Chapter and verse about the Christmas tree when it comes to Jesus' birth. Chapter and verse. That's supposed to be our attitude. Okay. Uh, turn to Second Chronicles 14. Second Chronicles chapter 14, verse 1. And we're going to read to 4. So Abijah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David, and Asa, his son, reigned in his stead. In his days the land was quite ten years, quiet ten years. And Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. For he took away the altars of the strange gods and the high places and break down the images and cut down the groves. Okay. And commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers and to do the law and the commandment. That's what I'm doing, brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm asking you, please get rid of those trees that you try to put up for Christmas. Get rid of them and seek the Lord. Right. Go back to his word. But there we have another person, uh, King, that turns... Uh, this one is... Uh, Uh, Judah, King of Judah, um, getting rid of the, the groves, these trees, and everything that's underneath, cutting down the trees, getting rid of anything that's on them or on top of them. He's just getting cutting them down and getting rid of them, period. All right. One more time. I thought this was last time, but one more time. Second Chronicles 31. So you just got to turn over to 31. So this is going through all these kings. There's kings that cut them down. There's kings that would uh, build them back up. And they, there's good kings that would serve the Lord and cut them down. And this goes on. Verse 1. Now when all this was finished, all Israel that were present went out to the city of Judah and break the image in pieces and cut down the groves and threw down the high places and the altars out of all Judah and Benjamin and Ephraim also and Manasseh until they 
had utterly destroyed them all, then all the children of Israel returned every man to his possession into their own city. Okay. Why am I going through all this? I'm just proving that these trees are mentioned throughout all scripture. Okay. These pagan trees and the pagan practices, putting stuff under, alt, uh, gifts underneath, uh, sacrifices underneath. And we're going to read, um, we're going to be going to Jeremiah 10. If you want to turn there, I call it the infamous Jeremiah 10. Because people will grab this verse, misuse it to try to justify Christmas trees. And it actually condemns Christmas trees. Okay. Um, the practice of Christmas trees. Okay. So, um, like I said, I call it the infamous because people like to try to misuse it. So if you want to turn there. But I keep going through all this stuff to let you know that the trees mentioned all throughout the Bible. There was so much more I could have gone through. Other chapters, it talks about the groves. Get rid of the groves. Groves are coming back in. Get rid of the groves. Come in. We got, they were commanded not to have these trees and do these practices that have to do with false gods. They're commanded not to do it. So Jeremiah chapter 10. I always call it the infamous chapter when you have people that misuse it a lot. <laughs> misuse those chapters in the Bible. And they twist it. And I'm pretty sure someone's going to say I'm doing that. Okay, uh, Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 5. Okay. Moreover, no, that's not right. That's chapter 20. Moreover, everybody's looking at me. What are you reading? I was reading the wrong chapter. Chapter 10. I'm still in the wrong chapter. Chapter 10, verse 5. And we're going to read to 7 first. They are upright as the palm tree. Let's see. No. 1. I'm getting all messed up. I'm jumping ahead. I usually have my finger here. <laughs> so please bear with me, brothers and sisters in Christ. Jeremiah 10, 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. I'm going to read to 5. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen. It says, Learn not the way of the heathen. Let that settle in. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven... Remember we talked about the summer solstice? It has to do with uh, the weather and the times, the sun coming out. Um, for the heathen are dismayed at them. Okay. They misuse them. For the custom of the people are vain. Let that also set in. Okay. First it says, learn not the way of the heathen. Then it says, the, um, the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest... The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They are upright as the palm trees, but speak not. That's important. Trees speaking, they're false gods, but they don't say anything. They're being used as gods, false gods, lowercase gods, but they don't say anything. They speak not. They must needs be born, because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. Okay. Now, things to I've underlined here. You want to go, uh, verse 1, it says, At the signs of heaven, for heathens are dismayed at them. Okay, at signs. We talked about summer solstice is basically what Christmas is about. The sun god, December 25th, the 12 days of Christmas. And... We talked about the uh, the mass, the church, the Catholic Church. It you have the old pagan Roman um, practices of the summer solstice just got transformed into the Eucharist and the Catholic Mass. It just got transformed into it. It's the same thing. If you basically look at the uh, practices and everything, it's it's sun god worship. So they misuse the the weather that God puts out there and says, "This this is me letting you know." Uh, what's going on in the weather. You know, be able to tell if it's going to rain today or if it might rain. All right? The customs of the people are vain, but before that it says, learn not the way of the heathens. Heathen 
is the key when it comes to the they there, when it says they, um, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. People try to relate that to the tree. It's not, ta I don't believe it's talking about the tree. It's talking about the people. Okay. Custom of the people are vain. People will say, well, there's nothing wrong with it. See, it's neither good or bad. But it just said right there in verse uh, 2, learn not the way of the heathen. And then it talks about the way of the heathen. It says their customs of the people are vain. See, a lot of people will skip those verses and go straight to verse 4. Okay. Um, speak not. Once again, there's implying that the trees are speaking. But it says here, be not afraid. Okay. Verse 5. We already read that one, but we didn't finish. I read the whole thing, but um, the Christmas tree, it's a false god. It's a false idol. Okay? It's a pagan practice. Okay? Learn the way of the heathens. The customs of the people are vain. Uh, finish, go back to five again. Halfway through, it says, be not afraid of them. It's not talking about the Christmas tree. It's talking about the people. They're afraid of the people. Okay, and as we keep going, because people don't like to do the whole context of this chapter. We won't make it through the whole chapter, I don't think. But we're going to get through a good portion of it. Okay. For they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. Wait a second, if the trees is not a big deal, why is it comparing the Lord, the God of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to their fault to those trees? Because they're false gods. Okay. Number seven, who would not fear thee, O king of nations, for thee for to thee doth it appertain, for as much as among all the wise men of all of the nations and in all their kingdoms there is none like unto thee now it's comparing that god is the wise god capital g god those men out there that are trying to get you to do those tree worships and they're threatening you saying you're going to do this you know kind of like the catholic church going out and killing millions of christians because you're supposed to observe the eucharist and the christians would reject the eucharist and they were threatened god's telling them don't be afraid of these people. They can't do evil nor good. God is the one who decides okay. what they can and cannot do. Okay. He's the one that is in charge. Okay. Now I said here, notice the afraid. Okay. The do... Uh, the do not evil is the pagan people hurting the Jews, threatening them, okay, I believe. They're trying to push their pagan practices on them, and they're threatening them. Okay? Nor can they do good to them. It's still the they. It's talking about the people. Okay? And I said, now why is this passage comparing the Lord to the trees? If the trees there is just a, just a custom, as far as it says custom, just like, you know, I shake hands. How you doing? Then why is it comparing God to the trees? to the practices, because those were false gods, lowercase g gods. And we're going to see this as we keep going. It'll affirm it again, not just here. It's almost like you're saying these are subtle hints, but it's going to actually come out and just flat out say it, that there's only one God. In other words, those are false gods. And I'm jumping ahead a little bit. Now, I'm going to repeat this verse again, but Colossians 3.17 um, and whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of our Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Uh, they're vain. They're, they're putting those trees up and worshiping those gods are vain. That custom is vain. Right? And that's the way of the heathen. Right? Can you do it in God's name? Can you put a Christmas tree up in your house, adorn it, put gifts underneath that's supposed to set there until the day that you're supposed to open them? Okay. Um, can you do it in the name of Jesus Christ? Oh yes, I can do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Chapter and verse. Right here it condemns it. Okay. Now, how do we know that the that the they in verse 5 is the people? Well, let's keep going. 
uh, verse 8. But they are altogether brutish. It just compared them to the wisdom of God, to the wisdom of these men. Okay. But they are altogether brutish and foolish. The stock is a doctrine of vanities. Okay. Now, you know how we teach major doctrine and we say, and it's truth, that you can't be off on major doctrine and be a Bible-believing, God-fearing Christian because it all comes back to who Jesus really is. Okay? And whether God's tr a truth. You know, the Bible version issue, eternal security. Um, pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away the body of Christ, the Godhead, okay? the true gospel. These are major doctrines that we teach. Did you know that the lost pagan world has their doctrines too? And a lot of times they try to bring in their doctrines and disguise it as Christian doctrine and try to mess people up. In the Old Testament we saw that. We saw the pagans coming in and trying to mess people up and get them to do practices they're not supposed to. And then we've got people coming in setting the record straight. Do we see that today in, in so-called professing Christianity? All this paganism and false uh, gods and stuff, trying to uh, Satan trying to wiggle his way in to Bible-believing Christians and get us messed up. Absolutely. Okay. But right here, it's talking about the people. They is referring to the people. Nine. How do we know this? Because the doctrines of vanity. What's the, the stock of the doctrines of vanity? Verse 9. Silver spread into plates is brought from Tarshish and gold from Euphaz. Uh, the work of the workman and of the hand of the founder, blue and purple is their clothing. They are all, they are all the work of cunning men. What did we just read up there? They were adorning the trees in what? Gold and silver? They deck it with silver and with gold. Okay? The people, the action, the people doing this, it was the people that the, the day is referring to. With, it says they're neither good, they can neither do good, nor can they do bad. Talking to how they can treat the Jewish people. Don't be afraid of them. But people like to grab that and say, when I did this study, I was like, really? I always thought it's talking about the tree because I was a PWC, Polly Wanna Cracker. Someone read that real quick, just went over just a bit of piece. They just tore a little piece, ripped it right out of context and say it's talking about the trees. It's not. It's talking about the people. Jeremiah 10.10. 10. Okay, and we're going to read down to 14. But the Lord is the true God. See? That's how you know that those trees and how they're adorned, they're false gods. That's their practices. They just started talking about their doctrines, stock of doctrines, their teachings that this needs to be done because you've got to worship these gods. Verse 10 just confirms it. But the Lord is the true capital G God. He is the living God and an everlasting king. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble and the nation shall not be able to abide his indignation. Thus shall, thus shall ye say unto them, the gods, lowercase g gods, I always like to say that because I like separating them so it makes an emphasis. These are fakes, frauds, that have not made these heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. He hath made the earth by his power, he hath established the world by his wisdom, and hath stretched out the heavens by his di discretion. When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He make lightning with rain, and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. Every man is brutish in his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image, for his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. Like I said, they put molten images. They put them on the trees, on top of the trees, under the trees, and they would give sacrifice, and it became part of the tree. The tree was part of the worship of their false god. All right.
Now, after going through all this, do you still think God is for Christmas trees? If you say yes, where is the fear that we just read about? Where's the fear? Okay, look at what we just read there. Verse 11. I'm going to go back. Look what we just read there. Thus shall ye say unto them, the gods, lowercase g gods, that have not made the heavens and the earth. Capital G God made the heavens, or Jesus made the heavens and the earth. Even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. He hath made the earth by his power. Where's the fear? He hath established the world by his wisdom and hath stretched out the heavens by his discretion. When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightning with the rain, with rain, and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. Where's the fear? Brothers and sisters in Christ, those of you who are ignorant in this matter, and those of you who vehemently stand for Christmas trees, where's the fear? It was right here in front of me. Where's the fear? you got to ask yourself, where's the fear? You're getting shown that the Christmas tree has no basis in Scripture. It's part of the pagan practice, and it has to do with worshiping a false god. Are you still going to do it? Are you going to go, if you have it up in your living room right now, when you get done with this video, are you going to go grab it and throw it away and get it out of your house, get that paganism out of your house? Oh, no, no, it's just, I, you know, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Where's the fear of God in you when it comes to the Christmas tree? Where's the fear of God? Right. Jeremiah 2.19, okay? Just jump down to 2.19. Woe is me. No, I'm sorry. Go back to uh, Jeremiah 2.19. I thought it was something we jumped down. Jeremiah 2.19 Thine own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Now therefore, and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God. Some of you are doing it ignorantly, and God's not going to hold you accountable. He's going to bring you to the truth. That's what this video is all about. But those of you that just after hearing the truth and reject the truth and they love their Christmas trees, this patch is something to think about. Hopefully it convicts you. Okay? Forsaken the Lord thy God and that my fear is not in thee, saith the Lord God of hosts. For of old times I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bands, and thou sayest, I will not transgress. I will not transgress against you, Lord. He, he uh, freed us from the law of sin and death, brothers and sisters in Christ. When upon every high hill and under every green tree thou wanderest, playing the harlot, I will not transgress. I'm going to worship Jesus Christ and only Jesus Christ. Yet you have a Christmas tree in your living room. Something to think about, right? pray about, and let it really convict you. My whole goal here is to reach you, not upset you, not make you mad, to reach you with absolute truth. Right? Now, I'll bring this up again because I want to. Notice that through all the studies that the pagans were misusing the tree. The tree in itself is not evil, brothers and sisters of Christ. You can cut down a tree and make a fence with it. You can use it to build a house. You can make furniture with it. You can use it to build a fire, to cook with, to stay warm with. God created that tree. The tree in itself is not wicked. It was how they were using it that made it wicked. Okay? It's important. These pagans were coming in, and they were slowly trying to, through threatening, life-threatening, as we read, threatening their lives. We've seen that in history. A lot of pagan religions, the biggest ones, the Catholic Church, killing millions of real Christians and even people that would not bow down to the Eucharist. 
the sun god worship. They wouldn't bow down to it. Okay? So through fear, or they'll try to sugarcoat it. They'll try to disguise it as something that's not so bad. All right? What do we have today? Christmas. All right? It's sun god worship. It's paganism. All right? But the, for the study, we're talking about the Christmas tree. Okay? Uh, so they got the G Jewish people to do the same, and it's all about disguising it. Okay? They're trying to disguise Christmas and all the practices of Christmas to look innocent and beautiful, and it's fleshly. Okay? Don't fall for it. All right? I'm here to help set it straight, and I know I'm not the only Bible-believing, God-fearing man out there that's done a video or has made comments standing for the Word of God and for serving God over obeying God rather than men. Right? The world, the ways of the world, the traditions of men, philosophy, right? and the traditions of men. Mm -hmm. Okay, now what I was putting now is that practice of getting God's children to sin and turn from Him still going on today? Is Satan still trying to get Christians to turn on God? Even ones that are false Christians, he loves them worshiping him. They worship an antichrist. They don't worship the real Jesus Christ. But does he love trying to get us to turn from God and sin against him? Oh, yeah. That's still going on today. Now, one thing i got to hit on real quick is, now, once again, where's the Christmas tree and the birth of Jesus Christ? Let that sink in. Where is it at in Scripture? Oh, it's okay. We can do it for the birth of Jesus Christ. Where is it at in Scripture? When it has to do with the birth of Jesus Christ. We found it in Scripture where it's condemned. It's pagan. They're false gods. But where is it at in the birth of Jesus Christ? Okay. I had someone get on to me about gift giving. Okay. Let's talk about who got gifts for the birth of Jesus Christ. So turn to Matthew chapter 2. Who got gifts? And why did he give gifts? Get gifts. They only tell you half truth and they leave out the other truth. There's two reasons he got gifts. Jesus got gifts. And we're going to read it here. Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the day of Herod, the king, behold, the there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born King of the Jews? That gives it away because we're going to get to it where it confirms this. That's one of the reasons he got gifts. It wasn't just that a, boy, a baby boy was born. It was a king that was born. Okay. For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. We're going to jump down when we do do our study on the birth of Jesus Christ to do it the Bible way. Uh, we'll go into this a little bit more detail. I just wanted to point out that it was because he's a king that he was given gifts. It was a king that was born. It was his birthday, but it was his king that was born, not just any man was born. Okay. Uh, so go down to verse 9. When they heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. Okay. Did Jesus get gifts on his birthday? No, he didn't. By the time the wise men got to him, I can't remember, because um, it says young child. Okay. He was like four or five years old. Uh, how do we know this? Like I said, we'll do the study on the thing, but it talks about how Herod th realized that he was cheated. They never came back to him, and he slaughtered like five to up to five years old. I don't, I'm hoping it's the right name, but it's just not in my th notes. And I seeing that we're getting to 50 minutes, but he Jesus didn't get gifts on his birthday. Right? It was a time had passed by the time he grew up a little bit, by the time the wise men got to him. When they saw the star, they received it with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother. And here's the key about the king part. And fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Two reasons that Jesus got gifts. Because a king was born. 
You can even say it's one thing. A king was born, that's why he got gifts. So the thing about the gifts, when you put it under the tree, when we talk about the tree, you're offering those gifts to false gods. Okay, It's been sugar-coated okay, to make it seem innocent and everything. But the other thing about giving gifts, you're only supposed to give Jesus Christ gifts on his birthday. Now, I'm not saying, I haven't really looked into it, but about birthdays being pagan, but I'll still have dinner on the day that I was born, and we talk about me growing up, and you talk about your past, one more year's gone by. But who's it about? If it's my birthday, it's about me. If it's Jesus' birthday, it's supposed to be 100% about Jesus Christ. People give me a hard time. Oh, this should, is it really a big deal that I give my children gifts? Here's the thing. Any other day of the year? No. And any other day of the year? No. On Jesus' birthday? Oh, yeah. Okay. Because then it's not about Jesus Christ. It's about your son or your daughter or your husband or your wife, your mother or your father, grandma, grandpa, uncle, aunt, cousin, second cousins. It becomes about you. It's no longer about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. All right. And now, because uh, I want to throw that in there as another evidence of it's a flesh holiday. It's Satan turning it around and twisting it, and it's no longer 100% about Jesus Christ. It starts turning into 100% about you. Or 80-20, or 50-50. It doesn't matter. It's supposed to be 100% about Jesus Christ. It's not supposed to be about me or you. All right. It's about Jesus being born, the King of the Jews, uh, our Savior, was born. Mm -hmm. Now, pressure from family and the lost world to follow and observe these practices. Oh, but my children, they love getting gifts and they love the Christmas tree. They love all the different things that come around it. Uh, the twinkle lights, putting lights up on the trees, the candles, the wreaths, the bells, and, and all this stuff. And these practices that you won't find in Scripture when it comes to the birth of Jesus Christ. And you get all this pressure from family. Okay? Now, I'm going to read this again. Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay. I forgot to put this in my notes. It's very important that you get to that verse, and I don't have this set up, but um, the Bible talks about how Jesus, I came not to send peace on earth, bring peace, I came... Not to bring peace, but a sword. I came to set a man, at, a son at variance against his father, a daughter against her mother, and I'm paraphrasing, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a, ma foes, a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Here's the part. He that loveth mother or father more than me is not worthy of me. He that loves, loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. You've got to stand up to him and say, hey, I don't want anything to do with Christmas. I don't want anything to do with this pagan practice whatsoever. You know what? You can celebrate, uh, skipping ahead, you can celebrate the birth of Jesus any day of the year. Let me space it out again. Any day of the year. Hopefully, I don't know why, but hopefully that sinks in. Okay. Since we don't know the specific day, it's not God-ordained. God doesn't come out and say, okay, this day you will observe the birth of Jesus Christ. Here's how you observe it. And at one time there was consequences if you didn't, uh, didn't observe it, but those consequences are done away with because we have liberty. I've already done the study on that with why holidays have nothing to do with liberty. Uh, holy days do, but holy days are ordained by God. Okay? We don't know the specific day. So if you want to do a day celebra celebrating that Jesus Christ was born, you can do that any day of the year. Why are peace people so hardcore about doing it in, in December? I just Once I've done this study and I talk to people, I don't get the stubbornness, the hardness. Okay. 
Um, Colossians 3, 8, 17. I want to read that one again. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of our Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and Father and the Father by Him. Okay? Someone says, I, I teach my kids, I teach my wife that I had a husband. Um, hopefully, um, I'm always cautious, but I'm going to just say a Bible-believing, God-fearing man teaching his children, his family, to give God glory in all things and give him thanks in all things. And he said, what's the big deal about the tree and the gifts? Now you know what the big deal is about it, okay? You're not teaching them to give God glory in everything if you continue to m promote the Christmas tree and the presents given each other presents. If you want to give someone presents, you give Jesus Christ presents. You know what, Lord, this year I'm going to give out more gospel tracts than I did last year. This year I'm going to try to go through the Bible three times instead of once like I did last year. You can do things for the Lord and say, I want to do things for you, O Lord. Okay? It's supposed to be about Jesus Christ. Okay? You cannot put up a Christmas tree and adorn it, putting gifts under it, and say, I'm doing this in the name of Jesus Christ. That Christmas tree is a pagan god. You're not doing it in the name of Jesus Christ. You can't do it in the name of Jesus Christ, because once again, chapter and verse. Okay. The Bible talks about when we read the Old Testament, that when the Jewish people did that, when they built, did these trees, adorned them, started putting things underneath them, Worshipping, people say, well, I don't worship the Christmas tree. Then get rid of it. Well, it's part of Christmas and i got to have it. You're worshipping it. Get rid of it. Okay? They're transgressing against God. And at this point, if you keep that Christmas tree, you are transgressing against God. Okay? And the other thing, and this is going to be a hard thing for some people to, they won't like this, but I'm going to say it. Okay, you ready for it? If after this video you stand, vehemently stand, for Christmas trees and putting gifts underneath them and then handing gifts out to everybody, not Jesus Christ, everybody else, okay, you cannot claim that this Bible, King James Bible, God's perfect written word, is your, ma is your foundation in all matters of faith and practice. You can't make that statement for it to be true at this point. When we get through all this, I've got, um, we're only going to do one more study on Christmas, and then, um, it says here a couple more, I might have a couple more videos, and then we get to the best part of all these studies. We're going to get away from the paganism and the junk of Christmas, and we're going to get to the birth of Jesus Christ, and we're going to do it the right way. You know the right way to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ? With His Word. Okay, with the life you live. Jesus came into the world and he died for your sins, brothers and sisters in Christ. We got to live a life of Christ. We are now in, created in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Okay? We're going to get to this stuff. Get the Christmas tree out of your life. So, grace and peace from God our Father and my love for you in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Thank you for watching.